Hi, welcome to Downshift. My name is Matt. And this, this thing is just nuts. This is the new Ford Bronco Raptor. We've also got a dedicated off-road review video on the channel, so this video will focus more on where the Raptor will spend the vast majority of its time, on the road. This is probably the most insane thing I've ever tested here on Downshift. It's wider than its big F-150 brother, or at least the Raptor version, and it gets more attention than the McLaren GT we tested last year. And behind the wheel, it's pretty special too. Under the skin, we have a 3-liter EcoBoost V6 from the Explorer ST, but here it's tuned for 418 horsepower and 440 pound-feet. That power then goes through a nice and snappy 10-speed transmission that's built in-house by Ford, and then it goes to either the rear or all four wheels with Ford's advanced track 4x4 system. And what that results in is something that squats and lunges to 60 in five and a half seconds. So it's quick, but the thing you all want to hear about, of course, is the sound, the elephant in the room. No, it doesn't make as much power as a Wrangler 392. No, it doesn't even sound nearly as good as a Wrangler 392, and it doesn't even sound as good as its F-150 Raptor older brother. However, it still sounds okay to me. And if you really hate it that much, there's a little button here that you can push on the steering wheel to quiet things away. It's fast, it's loud, but it's also one of the most fun things to drive. It's got 37-inch BFG KO2 tires and Fox live valve shocks that allow for 13 inches of suspension travel in the front and 14 inches in the rear. And what that means is with the dampers in Baja mode, you get one of the cushiest, most boat, old luxury rides ever. And I love that. People are constantly complaining about body roll and how terrible it is, and sure, in a Porsche Cayman, I don't want body roll, but in something that's seven feet wide and shaped like a box, it's kind of fun. Paulo and I drove this thing pretty fast, actually, on Road America's off-road course, and the closest thing I can describe it as is as if Space Mountain had suspension or shocks. The ride is so comfortable, and it's so soft, and it's just a riot. Anything you do, gas, brake, turn, it's an event, it's an experience. And it's not an experience you're gonna get anywhere else. The ride here is actually really good, and a lot of that is thanks to the independent front suspension that you get here. It's so much more at home on the road here than a Jeep would be, but of course, it's not perfect. All the body panels come off, basically. The roof comes off, the doors come off, and with that, there's inherently gonna be a bunch of wind noise that comes in, but they've added some additional damping for sound, and of course with some music playing, it's really not that bad. And finally, just the overall experience of being in this thing is special. It's got over 13 inches of ground clearance, so you kind of have to jump in and out of it. The frontward visibility is great, the wing mirrors are fine, but you end up seeing just a lot of fender flare. And the rear visibility is compromised by the massive 37 inch spare on the back gate, but at least Ford wrote Raptor on the mount backwards so you can read it in the mirror. So behind the wheel, there's really only two things that I don't love about this thing. The first is just the fact that it is over seven feet wide and we have a bunch of construction taking place around our house. And at one point there's a curve in one of the roads outside my house and they made that lane so skinny that even in a normal car, you'd have trouble not curbing a wheel. So there's some added stress in something that is this wide. And of course, if you extrapolate that, you think of what's it gonna be like to drive or park in something like a downtown area. And then the second thing is just the fuel economy, and we have to address it, right? It gets 15 or 16 MPG combined, depending on how judicious you are with your right foot. But to be honest, my 4Runner struggled to get 17 MPG, and that 4Runner doesn't do half the stuff that this thing does, so is it really that bad? But let's step outside so we can talk about some of the finer details.
Now, when I say that this thing over the course of this week has gotten more attention than we did in the McLaren GT last summer, I mean that. I couldn't go anywhere without people staring, stopping, and stopping me and wanting to talk about the car, ask about the truck. Um, and for what I do, that's interesting because I like to gauge the public's opinion on whatever new car I'm testing. But if I owned this, that could probably get a little old, you know? But I think the thing that's most captivating about this thing is the sheer size and presence of it. We mentioned that this thing is over seven feet wide. It's almost 10 inches wider than a standard Bronco, and it's wider than the F-150 Raptor. And being so wide, that means it needs the iconic marker lights, or Raptor lights, on the front, the wing mirrors, and the rear. However, the cab itself isn't any bigger than a normal Bronco four-door, which means all that added width comes from the 37-inch BFG KO2 all-terrain tires and the fender flares. This Bronco Raptor only comes as a four-door and it only comes with the 37s, so size comes standard. And then there's the front fascia. With the amber running lights, marker lights, and classic Raptor grille, there's no mistaking that this is something special. But if that wasn't enough, there's a completely unique hood design with a bunch of venting, a steel front bumper, four rigid industry ditch lights, and a big silver skid plate reminding you that this thing is just as at home off the road as it is on. Then underneath the body, you've got Ford's Haas 4.0 suspension system with a 3.1 inch Fox live valve bypass dampers. But there's also beefed up axles, knuckles, control arms, and other components underneath that deserve a lot of credit as well. From the profile, it's a Bronco four door, but a really tall one. The wheels that we have are the 17 inch beadlock capable ones, which means 10 inches of sidewall on any side of the wheel at all times. So it's easy to see where the soft ride comes from. The fender flares themselves are a black plastic and look and feel a little cheap, but they're meant to take abuse and be swapped out if need be. We also have the running board slash rock rail here, which is actually pretty nice since the step up is so high, over 13 inches of ground clearance. And our tester gets the Raptor splash graphic on the rear quarter panel, which I can't decide if I like or not. I don't like it on the truck, but it's a little bit more subtle here, so I, it might get a pass. And the rear design is pretty standard Bronco, just bigger. However, you do get unique taillights here, along with markers over the rear spare. And finally, the only Ford badge you'd find on the normal Bronco has been swapped out for a Raptor badge. And then there's things like towing capacity. And you max out at 4,500 pounds, which isn't a huge number, but it's probably enough to get you an overlanding trailer or whatever toys you want to bring out to the forest to have an adventure. So with that, let's step inside. So basically the whole theme for this video so far, and this, this vehicle in general is big. Everything has been bigger so far. The engine is bigger, the suspension travel is bigger, the tires are bigger, the styling is bigger. However, when you get into the cabin here, it's a bit more subtle and familiar. Like I said before, all the size comes on the outside, but the cabin area is the same as a normal four-door Bronco, and a lot of the interior styling details reflect that. However, you do still get a number of Raptor-specific bits around the cabin. For one, these seats, which are heated and not cooled, are super comfortable. The base upholstery is a marine vinyl, but you should definitely upgrade to the leather that we have here. I mean, you can even get blue leather if you really want. You also get a super girthy steering wheel with red stitching and a red noon marker. And the red accents continue throughout the cabin in things like the seats, the door netting, the shift boot, the goat mode dial, and vent toggles. Interestingly, the contrasting color on the dash is brown, which I can't really tell how I feel about it just yet. And the typical Bronco placard on your center console, that's raptorized as well. There's also a host of Raptor-specific features in your digital cluster, on your steering wheel, in the infotainment system, and elsewhere. You get buttons above your screen for sway bar disconnect, rear locker, front locker, and trail turn assist, which is an awesome feature as demonstrated in our off-road video. You still have cool overhead toggles for auxiliary inputs, and then on the steering wheel you have normal stuff like your 360 co-pilot controls, your media controls, etc. But you have dedicated buttons to adjust steering feel, damper settings, exhaust sound, and a button to take you into your Raptor menu. In there you have controls, settings, and gauges for everything you could possibly fathom. There are so many features that you can engage individually, but it's really just easier to use one of the seven GOAT modes and let the Ford engineers give you what they think is best for whatever it is you're doing. And then normal Bronco stuff like removable doors, removable roof, however the Raptor does get additional bracing. You've got the upgraded 12 inch sync system with wireless CarPlay. You get zone lighting you can control from your cabin. You get rear seats that are comfortable, big enough for adults and utilitarian and functional. And finally, the trunk is a good size, but with the rear seats down there is a noticeable hump. So the Raptor takes what was already a pretty solid and durable interior and adds a little bit more pizzazz. So with that, let's get into the final thoughts. 
The Ford Bronco Raptor. The obvious comparison is against the Wrangler 392, and if you never take the vehicles off-road, the 392 offers more V8 outrageousness. However, when we took this Bronco Raptor off-road, put it in Baja mode, and really started to get into the throttle, any lingering feelings for the 392 melted away. This Bronco Raptor is really a special vehicle, and for those of you that follow the channel, you'll know that's the highest compliment that I can give. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you off-road. Thank mm -hmm. you.